We meet to celebrate the coming of Christ into the world. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ, so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. Hello there, my name's Reverend Laura and it's lovely to have you joining us for worship today. During Epiphany, at the start of a new year, we have a really great opportunity to think about our faith journey and where we are going, to consider what walking in Jesus' footsteps will mean as we set out along the road again in 2023. A little bit later on, Reverend Janet will be speaking to us about Jesus's early ministry. We'll be reminded about Jesus's call to those first few ordinary people, a group of fishermen, to follow him. And in our worship, we'll be exploring how Jesus extends that call to us today. So we'll be considering the ways that we can share our faith communicate the good news, show Jesus' love to others, and learn to fish for other people so that they might enjoy the kingdom of God.
as we think about those early followers of Christ who changed the direction of their lives in order to go with him. We're mindful that so often we turn away from where Jesus is leading, but we can accept his invitation to say sorry. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Lord Jesus, illuminate the darkness in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to your saving love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, unstop our ears to hear your living word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Remembering that although we might have wandered far off, Jesus has won peace for us. Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. A reading from Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 to 23. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The first couple of chapters of the book of Matthew give us an account of Jesus' birth and his very early life. In chapter 3, we meet the adult Jesus for the first time. And in chapter 4, we see Jesus really getting going with his ministry. Now, Jesus has heard that his cousin John the Baptist has been arrested. John has been a right pain for the authorities. He's been calling the religious leaders out, calling them hypocrites. He's been telling them that someone was coming who would wipe the floor with them. That isn't going to go down too well, is it? When Jesus hears the news, he leaves his hometown of Nazareth and moves to Capernaum, an area mainly populated by Gentiles, by non-Jews. These were lands that were seen as lands of deep darkness. 
But we hear the prophecy from Isaiah that on them a great light will shine. And here is Jesus, the light, kick-starting his ministry right in their midst. And notice what John, uh, Jesus starts with. He starts by picking up where John left off. God's time of peace and justice is here, right here, right now. Turn around and see. He needs to get this message out. He needs people to hear this call to turn back to God. So he begins to call people to him, people who will follow him, learn from him, people who will help get this message out. He begins to call his closest disciples. Jesus begins with some ordinary fishermen. Simon, known as Peter, Andrew, James and John are going about their everyday lives, casting and mending their nets. Jesus turns up and everything changes. Nothing is the same ever again. Jesus calls, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Their skills are useful, but their catch will now be very different. Did the fishermen know Jesus before this? Well, if we were to read last week's gospel reading again in from uh, John chapter 1, we see that Andrew first heard of Jesus from John the Baptist. And Andrew spent time with Jesus, only a short time really, but he was so excited by what he heard, he rushed to tell his brother Simon, we have found the Messiah. And off goes Simon to see what all the fuss is about. And when he meets Jesus, he finds that Jesus knows exactly who he is. You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which translates as Peter. Jesus saw him knew him and knew all he could become. So maybe this event that we've heard today by the Sea of Galilee wasn't the first time the fishermen had encountered Jesus, but they recognised something very different in him. Jesus's call was so compelling that they dropped everything, gave up everything to follow him. For us today, as modern day disciples, Jesus' call is no different. He still calls, follow me. He still calls, come follow me and I will make you fish for people. So how do we do that? How do we catch people for God's kingdom today? Now, I have never been fishing in my life. Not even crabbing off the end of a pier with a line and a bucket on summer holidays. Never. But I have friends who are keen anglers. They love to go fishing. And they tell me, fishing takes time, patience and skill. And this is maybe no different when it comes to fishing for people. Catching people for God's kingdom is not about power or about fear. We can't frighten people into the kingdom. You might have seen this heard, seen or heard this attempted the shout of the end is nigh, repent or forever burn in hell. I'm not sure how effective this method really is though. Now I'm not saying we shouldn't repent, turn back to God after all, that is what Jesus is asking us to do. But without any context or point of why repentance is good for us, shouting repent at fork down in the supermarket might not be the best way to tell them of Jesus. And we shouldn't always maybe expect instant results when we tell people about God. And I'm not denying that there are some amazing conversion stories throughout the centuries. But I think the majority of people who hear about God for the first time, they need more time. Time to ponder, to question, to explore. We live in a quick fix, quick results society. But fishing requires patience. And those who love to go fishing recognise that you need the skill of knowing your waters. A good angler would know what kind of fish live in the waters he was fishing in. Where do they like to hang out? At what kind of, what time of day? When we fish for people, we need to know our community. We need to understand the context. We need to know what issues or challenges people might be facing. To do all this, 
we need to be with people. In cafes, in workplaces, with carers or medical professionals that might visit our homes, in pubs, in hairdressers, in schools, in shops, with friends and neighbours. Wherever we find ourselves to be, that's the place God has called us to shine the light of Jesus. And that's exactly where we go fishing. The NRSV translation of Isaiah's prophecy says, The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. The people who sat in darkness. Other translations say the people who walked in darkness or were living in darkness. But I thought this translation, the NRSV, really speaks into where many people are today. Walking in darkness doesn't sound pleasant, of course, but walking makes me think of movement, of journeying, hopefully towards light at times. But for people to be sat in darkness sounds like these people are trapped. They don't see a way out. They don't see any light. The darkness surrounds and consumes them. And I think we see a lot of this around us. People lost, consumed by anger, by fear, by worry. People desperate for the light. And we can point to the light that will change everything, just like it did for those fishermen centuries ago. Where we find ourselves is where God needs us to be. Where we find ourselves is where we will hear Jesus' call, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Everywhere we go, we will have opportunity to fish for people for the kingdom. Fishing for people can take time. It takes patience. It takes the skill of knowing our community. But the Holy Spirit goes before us, preparing hearts. He is at work in everyone we'll meet in everyone that might be sat in darkness. What does this fishing look like in practice? It looks like mentioning to our hairdresser that we're going to church on Sunday when they ask, do we have any plans? It looks like inviting our neighbour to the carol service. It looks like offering to help at one of our children and families make and take events. It looks like praying for those we know to come to know Jesus. If, like Peter, Andrew, James and John, we have been compelled by Jesus and heeded his call to follow him, we can't keep this good news to ourselves. It just has to be shared. Together with the Holy Spirit, through prayer, through serving, through loving those around us, through getting stuck into the life of our community, we can make strong nets that hauls people out of darkness and draws them into the transformative, loving, light-filled relationship with Jesus. Amen. faith will stand and I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I Sovereign hand will be my 
surrounds me You've never failed And you won't stop now I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise my soul Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander My faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Saviour Spirit lead me when my trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander And my faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Saviour Trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander My faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Trusting in the God who wishes to involve us in his plans, we move into a time of prayer. Begin with the collect, a special prayer for the day. God of all mercy, your son proclaimed good news to the poor, release to the captives and freedom to the oppressed. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit and set all your people free to praise you in Christ our Lord. Amen. And on this week of prayer for Christian unity, we pray for all God's people to be united as one body. God of all, because of your great love, our sins have been washed away and we are part of the beloved community. We come before you a holy family, a rainbow people, united in the beautiful diversity of your creation. We celebrate the rich tapestry of the human family. 
We commit ourselves to overcome prejudice, harmful assumptions and disunity wherever we may find it. And we pray that you would teach us to walk humbly in your presence. Amen. We'll continue to pray using some items to prompt and inspire us. First, we have a candle reminding us that Jesus is the great light for the people who sat in darkness. God of light and life, we pray for your church across the world. Help us to shine as a beacon of hope. Teach us to be bold in announcing that the dawn from on high has broken. Give us courage to walk into the shadows to seek those who feel lost and forgotten in dim and hidden places. And we pray for darkness to be pushed back and for light to flood in, particularly into those areas of our world that are stuck in conflict and turmoil. We pray world leaders would exercise their own power in knowledge that the kingdom of heaven has come near Lord, with those making economic policy, steering our public services and planning for the future of our environment, seek to do justly, love mercy, mercy and walk humbly with you. Amen. Second, we have some keyboard keys and some footprints. To help us think about how God calls us to communicate his good news. God of Trinity, you have always sought to involve us in your plans. You asked the fishermen to follow you and immediately they left their nets and followed. We have so many tools of communication at our fingertips today. Please help us to tell others about you, to chat, to post, to type about who you are. Show us how to tell your story and share what you have done in our lives. When we are worried about criticism, please show us how to live in faith rather than in fear. Lord, you walked upon the earth, the word made flesh. Please help us to bring our actions into line with yours. By your spirit, may we show your love to those you place in our path. May we be people of welcome, hospitality and endless compassion. In your mercy, help us to walk alongside others as you did. And lastly, to help us think about those first disciples, our fishermen. I've got my bowl with my fishes on here and I've got some water to help us to picture that fresh new creation that Jesus is ushering in. Loving God, you proclaim the good news of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people, pointing to what your new kingdom would be like. We pray now for those known to us in need of healing of any kind. We pray that those who do not know you would come to discover your love. And we pray for anyone who is facing a battle with difficult life events disappointment or grief. Amen. Uniting all our prayers together, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God the Father, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead us also in our pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God the Son, who turned water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana, transform our lives and make glad our hearts. Amen. And may God the Holy Spirit, who came upon the beloved Son at his baptism in the River Jordan, pour out his gifts on us, who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. And the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ be among us and all those we love, near and far, now and always. Amen.